Pretty good. Hi, so this is Bot Factory. These guys have a really nice machine called the Squink. We actually have one, and I'm here to uh, interview them, ask them some questions about it. So, introduce yourselves, guys. Uh, I'm Carlos Ospina, uh, CTO. And I'm JF Brandon, VP Sales, Marketing. And the Squink. So, this is the Squink. Uh, it's a circuit printer. It can print conductive traces. It can place conductive glue or solar paste using this head. And it can pick and place using this head. So you essentially slide them up, right, like that, and you place your head like that, uh, there, and you just switch the connector. You can also build uh, multi-layer boards by using an insulated ink and this uh, UV curing box. So here's an example of a printed uh, multi-layer board, a dual layer. You see the vias are just opens, so and the two layers connect uh, via that open. So you can go from a design, a Gerber file, or an image file, and print and get a circuit made in about half an hour or less. So this is also uh, another multi-layer board. It's an Arduino. So you can actually program this and have it do little things. It's like a little computer. The yellow traces you see here are at the bottom layer. The gray traces up here, those are on the top layer. And the yellow thing you see in the middle, that is the dielectric that Insulates both. Here's a working circuit. This is a uh, single layer board. It's an Arduino, same design. We booted it using these pins and a computer, and then basically ran as just a blink uh, indicate. So you can see here, flexible board, totally functions, made in half an hour. Here's another example. It's not a very good example, but I wanted to make a ridge flex board very quickly. So we printed on two different substrates in one print. So I glued on a piece of a fat adhesive back capped on to a piece of FR4 which is just an LED display, and print it all in one go. This is a simple experiment that I made. This is the kind of capabilities you can, you can do with Squick. So can I ask you guys, who do you think are going to be buying these machines from you now? So we had a theory when we began, and we, we thought this would be a maker's product. And we adventured ourselves into coming to a, 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 the ID Tech X show last year. And we realized that a lot of companies actually were into this. Like they were like, actually, I have an R&D R department and I would love to do this. And technically now, most of our customers are industry. Right. Uh, some universities as well have it. And I would say just a couple of makers. So. Right. So we've got thousands of people here. I gather you gave a, a, a good presentation this morning on the subject. Did that go down well? Yes. The, the presentation was awesome. Uh, I believe a lot of people still to hear about it. One point that was mentioned to me after the presentation was the fact that we may be the entry point for printed electronics as people right now only see it as a, a, either you are doing RFID or you are doing antennas and we are showing that you can actually build functional circuits uh, as long as you have a tool that can do it you know, properly. Um, so this is very exciting. I believe this is going to open opportunities for the whole industry. Fantastic. So what kind of applications do you think people are going to be using this for initially? Are you thinking IoT and wearables? Those are some hot topics right now. Absolutely. Uh, actually, there's like three things that are changing now, and we're seeing it with our users. One is the extinction of the distinction between cases and circuits. So technically, people are starting to print on the object itself. Uh, the second is flexible and super lightweight. So avionics, drones, all that, they are really using this. Uh, if you want to have a sensor in a non-conventional shape, like a cylinder going in a tube, for example, you can do that. Uh, so it's essentially just breaking the boundaries that were established some years ago with FR4 and like you know the old way of printing boards. They, those are all being like broken. Like no more rules. Nice work. Thank you very much guys. Thank you. Caught us right at the end of an interview. <laughs> I, I so here at Bot Factory, are you the first to be able to do this? First to build printed circuits? Yeah. No, we're not, but we're the first to actually bring it to your desktop. I think that's a kind of a critical difference between us and everyone out there. We're trying to essentially, you could call it democratizing production by providing a tool that easy to use, it's intuitive. That, that can be used by industrial users, but they don't have to pay an absurd amount of money for 
you know, building circuit boards. How much is it going to cost? This machine starts at 3K, so $29.99. Uh, US dollars, and we're selling it with a multi layering capability uh, for the next few weeks for $3,500. So, all the inks and materials and substrates to make a multi layer board. What's important about multi layer? So, multi layering allows you to do multiple things. <laughs> um, but primarily, it's making a more complex circuit board. So, this guy, because I can actually drop the lines below other traces, I can actually make a smaller device. Uh, which means that lower resistance between the different IC chips, passives, capacitors, you name it. The other important thing that you might want to note is that you can actually um, you know, essentially get higher density. You can put more parts onto a, onto a board as well. There's a lot of you know, various uses. You can also place a ground plane, you can place a heat sink and you know, draw energy away from your various chips and so forth. A lot of usefulness is that you can do when you do multiple like sandwiches. Is it like having a, a, a SMT at home? SMT device at home, like an SMT inline... With print, with flexible and everything? Yeah, I mean, I, I, we like to call it a circuit factory because it's exactly that. I mean, you're able to essentially create any kind of printed circuit board that you want. Any? Like, how big can this stuff be? Uh, six by seven inches. So this is a six by six inch board, but you could print the whole layer, the whole substrate if you wanted to. But uh, how detailed can it be compared to like a, a standard PCB? Uh, standard PCBs uh, can actually run things like four mil lines, two mil lines, you know, layer stuff like 10, 20, that kind of thing. Uh, we're only limited right now to two. We can potentially do more. Um, and our trace widths are between 10 and 12 mils. So yes, fatter traces, connectivity is lower, and so forth. But for most applications, you don't need insane tiny thin traces. You can build a basic sort of prototype that's like, you know, proves out a concept or a product that you want to develop. Is it possible that a, a, a genius PCB designer would be able to fit everything even though the lines are fatter and, and do lots with that, that yeah. kind of precision? Yeah, that kind of constraint, these kind, the kind of constraints that Bot Factory Squink has are nothing that you can't overcome with a little bit of thought. It's like owning a 3D printer. Yes, you can't do, you know, the kind of crazy things you might see in injection molding, but you get a part way faster. And so the restrictions on design are easily overcome by the sheer speed and rapidity that you can actually create a board. Speed. All right. So this is right. Show me. In the future, right. you'd like to have all, all the everything just automated? Yes. We want to automate the whole process. We want to get better jetting, better inks. We want to automate the whole process. You just stick something in, press play, come back, and you have a board done size lines and stuff? Yeah, of know? course. I mean, Is it possible? Yeah, I don't see why not. There's no technical... Uh, what you see around this event, you know, printed circuits and things like that, is what we should be able to be do, what we should be able to do as well. We're using, you know, disposable cartridges. Everyone else is using sort of more advanced stuff that's way more expensive. So since when do you have this working? We've been, we've developed, the first prototype we started working about two years ago. We started selling last year, around June. Uh, 2015. How many people are buying it? We've sold about 80, 85 machines. And what do people think? They love it. They love use it. it. Uh, we have one uh, very happy user in Mexico that uses it all the time and saves themselves thousands of dollars uh, by using the swing for assembling boards. Uh, instead of screen printing and, 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 and sampling. Uh, we have a few users that have been using it to experiment with all things. Conduct a uh, light of Lego. Uh, that's kind of an interesting project. Uh, we have users in makerspaces in New York, New York University, NYU. Uh, where else? Um, we've had a lot of Fortune 500 companies, all the innovation labs of all the big ones, the bottom machine, and I can't mention any of them, but a certain company in Cupertino bought one. Uh, and they loved it. They, they said it was an intuitive product, which is very good for us. Nice. So this is going to be inside the iPhone 7? I'm just joking. Okay. <laughs> no, but, uh, so, yeah, but so this is awesome. The so are calculated automatically, comparing the top layer. Is this in the future, are people going to be able to print smartphones? I don't see why not. So I don't see why not. You're making the, PC, the PCB and then you would print the case? Yeah, or could you print the screen? Well, yeah, I mean, printing the screen would be... That's silicon. That's, that's, that's pretty that's hard to do. That's not easy. That's not easy. Uh, import that and glue it on your homemade smartphone. Yeah, but that's, that's fine. I mean, like, if that's a part you have to place, then you can do that. Um, but I don't see why not you can build, like, a very simple phone using screen. 
Um, I mean, we made an Arduino. It's a very simple microprocessor. We replaced a dielectric, a, a di you know, some sort of ink, some sort of a microphone. Or, what? Like, this guy's an Arduino. Like, I don't see why not. I can't make, like, a phone out of this guy. Some sort of very simple radio. What we processor is there? Uh, this guy is an AT Tiny made by Atmel. Uh, AT Tiny 85. Uh, is it an ARM Cortex M0 or no? That's a, just a tiny microprocessor. I'm not exactly clear on what the specs are. What uh, what kind of complexity could you have on a processor that you put there? Could you put an ARM processor on there? Yeah, you can place processors. Certain processors. I mean, I think they have to meet our standards. Like, this is kind of one of the smaller chips that you can place. But you can place accurately. This is pick and place. It, it works fine. All right. Are there any issues? An issues? You have some issues, wow. like stuff that doesn't work? Is yeah, sometimes. Okay? So we had, we had trouble. Okay, I can tell you what the biggest troubles was jetting correctly. The jetting strategy, the printing strategy is what they call it. Uh, that was difficult. It okay. required a lot of time and a lot of very careful measurement of every single time we printed so that we weren't you know, repeating ourselves, making the same mistake. Uh, that you took a long time. To, um, quality assure what the result comes out of the machine? So there's no automated quality assurance. You basically point. print it, you take a look, you Perfect. measure it with a multimeter, and it works. Now, now, that is the minimum usually you know, we've gotten it down to like 20 out of 20. Your circuit, if it meets our design requirements, will work. So it will work pretty reliably what comes out of the... Yeah. So it users... Nicely printed. Yeah. The past year we've made some big, big, big like steps forward in terms of software making sure that the machine just works reliably and repeatably. So you have a, a BeagleBoard Black running the whole thing? Yes. And uh, uh, how, do you want to get even more performance in the next Yeah, one of the biggest limitations is I think the speed of the, the pick and place device. That's because we use camera recognition software to actually identify the outline, make corrections on the part, and then place the part. That requires a great deal of processing power that we should be able to speed up. Um, we just want to, so we're, in the future we want to get that fixed. We want to get a faster processor so that we can pick and place just like that. Is that the, one of the coolest things ever made with a BeagleBoard Black? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're friends with we're friends with the guys who made that product, and they, they love it. They love the fact that their products can be used. Hmm? They have one of those. Well, it's a foundation, so it's not profit. So they're always asking one for free. I think. <laughs> I can't. We even talked to. Who made the software to make that work? Is that you? Oh yeah, that's us. The special sauce, the software. No. You have how many guys? Uh, we have six people. Uh, we have two guys building. Uh, we have one guy, lead engineer Andrew. He's developing all the software. Uh, Carlos is CTO. Uh, Nico is CEO. Uh, George is on our operations, kind of managing, because there's, there's hundreds of parts that go into this device. We manage so many different suppliers. We manage so many different people to, 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 to actually build this product. Um, and we do it all ourselves. We don't use contract manufacturers. We build this in the United States. We spend a great deal of time trying to make the product work to assure that it actually works. And to, uh, to our knowledge, not a single person that's bought a machine has had a problem where they've had to return it. Could you uh, consider uh, partnering with somebody to mass produce this, lower the cost? And sure. We've had a lot of people ask us, hey, can you partner with us and stuff like that. That happens. And but, uh, what kind of software do people use to make it run and everything? Software? Yeah. You plug and It's a plug and play device. Squink is the device you pull out of your box, you connect it to your network, or you connect it directly using Ethernet or Wi-Fi, and you open up your browser, type in Squink, on your browser address and then it shows up. The software is already on the machine. And it updates every few weeks. We update it, send updates, and it goes through. So you don't better. have to download anything. It becomes better when you update it? Yes. Squink evolves. <laughs> All right. What, what is the way you based? We're in New York City. Uh, we are in a uh, part of New York called Queens. Uh, it's right next to Brooklyn, uh, Long Island City. And uh, we are at a space called NY Designs. It's a large uh, business incubator. Uh, managed by New York City. Um, yeah. So, what's your background? Your, your team? Where, 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 Carlos where did is, you come to New York? Carlos is a graduate of NYU, New York University, and he started and exited on multiple different companies. So many to name, but he's done very well. Um, Nico, CEO, and he's from an NYU. They they both met each other at New York University. Um, myself, uh, I've been in 3D printing for. 
six years, I've worked with companies like eShape, they're doing concrete 3D printing. Uh, I've had a bunch of successful Kickstarters. Um, what did you do? What I, was, I, was, I developed the Make Eraser. It's a kind of device, it's a little accessory product for 3D printers to, so you can smooth your 3D print after you've done it. It's kind of cool technology. It's just an idea. And was, we got 25K on a Kickstarter. It was really fun. Another Kickstarter? Yeah. And I've, I've done tons of work in concrete 3D printing. I've worked with the city on using concrete 3D printing to fix their harbor. Um, I Does worked it work? With, no, was, Fixing the harbor with 3D printing? No, it was just a, it was just a conceptual idea. That, they gave me money for. Uh, what else have I done? I worked with a company called Sunfish Solar. They were doing concentrated solar energy systems in Portugal. I had some patents related to solar uh, tracker tracking devices that use use 3D printing. Uh, really interesting concept that I basically developed uh, a few years back. And uh, I met these guys a few years ago when they were like, "Hey, we want to try circuit printing," and I was just like, "So, ah, we can't do that." But I was really impressed by like how far they were getting. Um, so I asked to join and here I am. Cool, so that's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Future. Right. No, so we take care of that.